Hello everyone, uh, this is Michael Schmeler from Tag News. I would like to welcome you to our webinar on how solar market developments in China impact the global PV sector in times of the virus. Um, I have with me um, three distinguished guests. Uh, we are really, really international now and in order that you um, actually get a bit familiar, more familiar with us. Um, if you have a chance, um, you might actually uh, see see us and our faces. Uh, we are really um, pretty much uh, located around the globe. So we we have with us uh, Jali Jiang. She's a solar analyst at Bloomberg um, New Energy Finance. Uh, she's based in Hong Kong. We have with us uh, Benjamin Wong. He's uh, Global Brand Marketing Director for Longi Solar. He's based in Taipei at the moment. We have um, with us Sandy Woodward, Sales Director Europe for Jinlong. He's based in Manchester. Um, I'm at the moment close to Frankfurt. And then our IT is uh, in Shanghai, mainland China. So um, what we want to do um, in the next uh, 60 minutes is look at, um, at the impacts of COVID-19 and um, we want to look at it um, um, with, by viewing on the Chinese market, simply um, knowing that China is both the biggest producer and um, also the biggest market, even though um, demand has quite um, quite decreased um, over the last uh, two years after um, the restructuring um, started uh, with um, um, 531, um, so in May 2018. And um, so we, we don't want to look so much on the production side um, I think we will also, since we have two, two world-leading manufacturers um, of solar modules and, um, and inverters with us, um, look at that a bit, but we want to much more cover demand. So look at what's happening in China at the moment, what can we expect, and how the still world's largest market um, will influence what's going on in the rest of the world. So we will start with a short um, presentation um, of Jali. Um, she will set the scene. Afterwards, we have a panel. You are invited constantly, actually, to um, ask questions. Please use the control panel for that. And what I will do is um, we will also have a, a, a panel in the end. But while I'm talking, so I have my, my, my structure of questions. Um, but if you have great ideas or want to know more details, I try to integrate that um, into my um, into my questions. Um, so then let's um, let's start first um, with um, with Jali um, starting um, with her presentation, please. Sure. Um, thanks, Michael, and also Taya News for having us here. So uh, in the following 15 minutes, I'm going to uh, share some of our recent views on the global PV market, especially under the heat of COVID-19 globally. Um, could you go to the next slide, please? So, um, so at the beginning of this year, uh, BNF, uh, we had a global annual P, uh, PV new build forecast of 120 to 150 gigawatt for 2020. Um, this, will, this will include uh, about 5% uh, supplied by the thin film and the rest by the crystal silicon. And the low number here um, is for, uh, for the low case that based on, based on the, like, each individual markets and the high end for the optimistic sum. Um, but because of the COVID-19 uh, outbreak globally, we cut the numbers to the current uh, number you can see here which is 108 to 143 gigawatt. Um, we made that change in mid-March. And uh, this could make the 2020 the first down year um, so far for at least, um, since at least the 19, 1980s. 
um, for the for of the new solar like additions during the year and and because also because of the uh, possible negative impact on the global microeconomics uh, for example project developers may have restricting uh, may see restricts of project financing and also delays of auctions and other government incentive programs uh, as well as the delays in ppa signings so we also reduced the forecast for the following two years by actually five to 10 gigawatt. Next slide, please. Uh, so the biggest change uh, we made in mid-March uh, is actually we reduced our China demand, uh, uh, China demand estimate from the previous 30, uh, 36 to 44 gigawatt to the numbers that you're seeing here now, which is uh, 26 to 37 gigawatt for 2020. And this is mainly due to the policy changes uh, in response to COVID-19. Um, so on March 10, uh, China, China, the China government announced that the 2020 solar uh, mega auctions in China will be pushed back from, the early, uh, from early May to, uh, to end of June. So basically, that's about two months delay. Um, the government has also pushed the commissioning deadlines for these projects uh, from the end of the year, um, I mean, which is similar like what's happening last year. So which could mean that there may be no rush uh, to build in the second half of 2020, and many projects may be built in, uh, in 2021. And uh, another thing is that the deadlines for 2020 auctioned projects which uh, which which use, which was uh, the middle of this year could possibly be pushed back again, but there's no uh, certain uh, there's no certain documents for that yet. And if we look at the 2021, um, because the China it, because it's commonly so the industry commonly believe that the China government will uh, will not provide subsidies for new projects anymore. Um, there is, we do expect that there will be a temporary market down, but thanks for those projects which has been planned in 2020 and also probably delayed to next year. So we do expect a stable transition for, uh, for the 2021. The next please. So this is when, uh, this, is, this is what we expect, except, uh, expect that uh, the markets will be built more than one gigawatt in 2020. Uh, there will be 22 markets actually. Uh, we expected to have this uh, like the gigawatt scale markets. Uh, so the uh, so the low and the optimistic scenarios are made based on the data transparency, the policy, and the market um, uh, market dynamics of each country. Um, and the 22 countries you are seeing here accounted for about 80% of the total expected installation in 2020. We also cut around 500 to 600 megawatt residential projects in the US in mid-March to reflect the slower uh, residential rooftop uptake caused by COVID-19. However, this is, the, uh, this is for mid-March. So the virus, situa the virus situation uh, developed fast and and we all know that things are still changing now every day. Um, so my colleagues in different regions, they are still like uh, monitoring the local markets. So we may uh, further reduce the numbers or not, depending on the development of the virus situation. Next, please. So um, a little bit on the production as well. So in general, we didn't really worry about much about the supply back in mid February, when things turned kind of positive after China's lockdown. Um, so I will have a quick uh, recall back to uh, about one, one month and a half ago, when China was still the uh, epidemic center. So the global PV market then was pretty worried about uh, the PV supply because China is the manufacturing hub of the global PV, uh, PV industry. Um, about 70% to more, higher as 96% along the value chain, uh, the capacity locates in, in China. Um, but we estimated uh, about less than 5% production loss in the first quarter caused by COVID-19, despite of the disruptions from workers, logistics, and raw materials. And the two reasons for that, 
So firstly, if you see the tables here, which show the number of infections of provinces in China and the percentage of capacity that are located in these provinces. So basically, uh, most of PV capacity um, is, uh, are located uh, in those less affected areas. And uh, are all the provinces actually, uh, if you see the official planned date to resume work, is like uh, in the mid of February. And, every, uh, and it, it did come out uh, to be resumed as scheduled. And um, by now, most of the manufacturers has resumed to, to a pretty normal situation already. And next slide, please. So the second reason um, for, for that is that the, be the, the better situation basically for the large manufacturers who has continuous, uh, continued production during Chinese New Year. Um, and also they have the inventories of raw materials. Uh, they have higher inventories for that, to con uh, so which, make, which will support them to produce, if not, uh, although not like 100%, but some, some uh, productions uh, when those material suppliers are still kind of resuming to work. So if you see, uh, see the chart here, that the top 10 makers along the value chain actually uh, has most of the capacity already. And we see the increase in the past several years. So uh, basically for now, the, man the majority manufacturers in China has returned to mostly normal, and especially for the big ones. Uh, and for many delayed, uh, delayed notice of module shipments and even some force measures um, back in February, the the delays are mostly controlled in, into several weeks, uh, and some are even like arrived on time as per uh, some developers. And next, please. Then we were, when we made this chart uh, in mid in mid February, this is actually to show how we think overcapacity could easily make up any any loss in the first quarter uh, caused by COVID nineteen assuming that the virus will get con will, will be controlled uh, before the second quarter, and it did in China. Um, the two red dot lines are the global demand of crystal silicon in our, in our current forecast, uh, and we have changed the numbers to the new numbers we, we, we just showed previously, uh, we made in mid-March. The number is a little bit different is because we kind of kick out uh, kick out those supplies by the thin film. So the 100.3, oh, sorry, 103 uh, is kind of uh, is is to the 108, 108 to the low cases, the low case there. Um, so the simple conclusion is that they are pretty enough capacity uh, even before the capacity expansion. Um, the, that, that is for the blue, blue bars that you see there. That's the capacity by the end of 2019. But the fact is that the PV capacity expansion is not disturbed, uh, disrupted at all. So by mid-February, uh, we, we've tracked about uh, around like 25 to 46 gigawatt along the value chain um, the, of the new capacity that are planned to be completed in 2020. So we do assume about half of them can actually contribute to the 2020 production uh, as they kind of uh, gradually started to operation. And uh, one month later, so by now we have seen some more recently, uh, which will be made, uh, which will make the numbers even bigger. So um, because of, so as you can see here that the over, over capacity, um, no matter like, no, no, no matter with, no matter what the situation in China uh, now. So basically we are seeing the overall capacity is there and it's pretty severe, especially when we reduce the, when we reduce the global demand caused by the outbreaks of COVID-19 globally. And this make, make, makes overcapacity worse, I mean. So uh, as a result, uh, we expect the year end uh, factory gate module prices for uh, the for mono perk modules basically to uh, could be like 19.5 to 20.5 US cents per watt, which is lower than our previous kind of to about 20 to 21 US cents per watt in mid February. So uh, next please. 
And following, I'm going to share, we have, I have two slides just to share some other developments we had in the industry um, or in China, uh, particularly from the manufacturers. So uh, about those new capacities we have, we, I just mentioned, um, so, most, so all of them are actually target production to be compa uh, compatible with the big wafer trend. Um, as the tables on the on the left side uh, shows that the major four uh, four wafer sizes that are available right now in the markets, compared with the traditional mainstream uh, M2, which which is with a set length about uh, 156.75. So um, to increase so increasing the wafer size will lower uh, the per watt cost for wafer production, cell fabrication, and also module assembly. That's what, that's why the whole industry is pretty into this trend. Um, now, not not like from from the wafer makers to modules and even the developers. Um, and from the right side, you can see how those like wafer wafer. Uh, how those the increase that uh, increase area of the wafers can help the modules to achieve like higher output um, in the in the in the final product. And the major differences here um, is that the first three um, the size which 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 include the G1, M4, and M6. So basically, they can be um, they can be kind of uh, upgrade from the existing production lines with uh, little or some extra money um, that so you can you can produce them with the current lines but for the bigger ones which we call as m12 on which we basically you have like a uh, bigger size it will need like new cell and module production lines um, to be built up because the size has uh, exceeded the physical limit of some key equipment um, as to all the new new expansion pro um, New expansion capacity that we have tracked right now, most of them are, are to, compat to be compatible with the biggest size, which is the M12. Um, but uh, due to the restriction of the wafer availabilities and also the unknown market, uh, market acceptance, we currently expect um, the size way that you need less money or you, you don't need to build new lines will can will be the mainstream for the uh, for the in the market and for m12 uh, we expect about it won't exceed it about 15 percent in the next two to three years and the last one last slide please so uh this so this is this is just to show us some other developments in the module side as well, so including the half cut and the bifacial and also the shingled structures. This is the the bankability survey that we did in 2019 to those uh, module buyers, including EPC companies, uh, developers, and also banks. So basically, uh, a simple conclusion is that the half cut and bifacial are more better accepted uh, by the module buyers. Um, but of course, you can you can definitely make half uh, bifacial modules uh, for half cut and a single. So uh, shing shingled, not single. So basically, um, we are seeing that most of the shipments by the major manufacturers now they have uh, a lot of half cut products already. And for bifacial, we do expect about twenty percent of global market share by this year. And even within some, even higher in some uh, individual markets, for example, the U.S. So with that, um, yeah, with that, I will just hand over back to Michael for any further questions and discussions. Thanks for for your thanks for listening. Thanks, Jolly, uh, for this uh, nice and comprehensive overview on demand, supply, and also technology. <laughs> um, so um, what I would like to do is um, let's first um, start, because that's the, the title and the theme of this um, this, this webinar, um, talk a little bit about China. Um, so um, when, so, 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 so Ben, Sandy, um, so being um, um, 
also very big manufacturers, uh, global leaders. Um, so just a quick status check. Uh, can can you confirm basically what um, what Jali said? So what what's the status of your production facilities in in China? So everything fully up and running again? Um, hi hi Michael. Let me comment on a few a few items that was brought up um, by by Sandy. Um, certainly the the plants in in China are up, up and running again. I would say over 85% uh, of the capacity they, they, they used to be at the moment. Certainly the other 20% would be due to uh, labor as well as some shortages of, of materials. We see this across mostly tier one manufacturers. Um, but in general, uh, capacity is, is almost in full. Um, Longi has, uh, is, has less impacts um, and I think uh, Yali showed a very interesting slide that shows the impact of the COVID-19 by different different provinces in China. And because most most of our production are, are outside of the of the hot, say let's say how the hot zones, as particularly the ingots as well as the the wafer factories, it is, is actually situated in on the west side of, of, of China. Um, we see less impact on that side. So from a from a materials and particularly vertical integration point of view, we see less impact. From a people point of view and a goods movement point of view, certainly there are some impact uh, in this, and which and this is expected to be resolved very very quickly. Um, the other point that I like to bring up that Yali brought up was the demand, um, the new forecast for China, um, and I think I, I made some notes here. She put 26 to 37 gigawatts. Um, for this year, um, compared to the original forecast of 36 to 44, and this is for China alone. Um, while in Longi, we see a softening of demand in, in China. Uh, we don't see the 20, we, we are a bit more on the higher end of her scale. In fact, we are looking at a forecast of China of about 40 gigawatts in there. Um, against her high band of 30, 36, I remember, yeah, 37, right? Uh, uh, Yali, 37. Yeah. Um, uh, we see this coming from 20 gigawatts coming from the, um, the subsidized pipeline as well as seven from the unsubsidized and, and province pipeline to reach 13 the residential at seven and the unsubsidized and province project will reach about 13 gigawatts. Um, this is the numbers that, that we currently see um, in Longi and we are preparing the public production against this. Um, I also want to mention that certainly Q1 is, is done and, and in Q1 we Longi has delivered already five gigawatts just, just in bifacial alone, bifacial modules alone. Um, and we expect to close this year um, fairly cl close to our, our view. We also see that a lot of the installation will be coming in China in Q4, like you mentioned, um, particularly because the auction is going to be in June. And from June onwards, you would have the, the bid for land and then the, the installation would be a rush in Q4. Um, this is an encapsulation of the view that we see. Um, yeah, I mean, I think from uh, I think I think from my side, um, concur with most of that. I think um, I guess not being on the ground, being based in Europe, I'm not 100% in touch with it on a daily basis. But I think the bit that's surprised me is just how quickly we have recovered out there. And I think you know, as, as far as um, Yali's presentation said as well. Um, the, the ability to get going again has been quite amazing. Yeah, um, we, I don't think we can say we're 100%, but I would probably concur with Ben, 80, 90%. It's only maybe a little bit of um, human resource um, restrictions, but not enough to now even affect uh, shipments. And, um, but the, the, the speed to get going again was what I think amazed me and I think amazed even 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 my colleagues there we went from from a complete shutdown to very fast operation again in a pretty controlled manner so that was good to see and um i think um again uh the the number we're working to is is about 40 gigawatts so 
Uh, I think uh, Ben and I are on the same same page there. Maybe we're, we're optimistic, Yali, on your, your 37. Yeah, we do have that number as 37, so <laughs> just three gigawatts. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk a bit at the end of the year. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, it, it will be an end of end of year thing. Um, you know, we're hoping to see um, the resi resi installations pick up quicker now, but the uh, um, the, com the commercial utility work will be later in the year. I'm going um, first a bit to the supply side then quickly. Um, so just to to um, finalize that also. Um, maybe to you, Sandy. So we did a webinar a month ago, and at that time there was also the issue of procurement because an inverter, unlike a module, has uh, many more semiconductor parts. So, is mm -hmm. is there any issues with that? So at least at that point it looked like. Um, but um, yeah. or is this all all solved? Um, um uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, week one, week two, out of startup. Um, oh, let's resume. So. Re re resume res, resuming production um it was a little bit difficult i think uh we're uh we're south of ningbo and as a region have not been particularly hard hard hit um there was a little bit but um we're working from quite a strong stock position generally anyway so um certainly we have been in a process of clearing back orders from the from the closed period um but we're 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 back to a pretty normal position on that now. Um, okay. There's an argument that um, we we have we use quite a lot of, quite a lot of European source componentry, but um, even if we look at some of our biggest suppliers, um, the the message we're getting at the moment there is that um, you know they're 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 operating as normal despite some of the shutdowns in Europe. Um, when we talk about the uh, talk about the demand side, so I, I just um, in the last few days there were a couple of announcements from uh, from a couple of um, of analysts, and it was interesting how how wide the the spread was. So um, so one analyst was um, some, became very conservative and downgraded China dramatically. So that was um, what I read from from. Frank Haukwitz um, in China, so he went uh, close to to the low 20s um, um, in, in one of his estimates. On the other hand, um, there was um, an, uh, recently an update from from IHS, which um, updated or increased their, their China estimate to um, to 42 gigawatts, and the rationale was there actually that demand in other parts of the world will go down simply because China has um, has now overcome the, the, the COVID um, issue while um, other other regions of the world um, are in the middle of it or just uh, starting to slide even in it. And uh, so that um, demand there will go down. And on the other hand, then China's government at some point will make sure um, that they support China as a production hub. Um, do is is this a, a story the the second one with from IHS which you consider um, yeah reasonable so for, from your your point of view um, this um, could, could that be um, so um, demand worldwide goes somewhat down and China kind of um, becomes stronger again so a little bit opposite to to the trend we've seen in the in the last few years uh, where it was um, was different China going down and the rest of the world uh, Picking up shares, uh, so that goes to anyone. Hey, ben, Is that to me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but no, Yali, if you want to answer, please. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, right. So, firstly, we BNAP, we do have a pretty wide range of uh, forecast. So, twenty six to thirty seven. Um, but so to, so there's the uncertainty here, and which is also, um, I mean, one of the one of the uh, the points that I would like to address to your question is that uh, it's not clear now whether the the government will push back the deadlines for those uh, auction projects um, for this year. So basically means whether those projects are required to be um, to be to be completed this year or they can. In construct, it can 
they can start construction next year. So that will make the difference of the higher and lower numbers in our scenarios. Um, whether the government, whether the China government will uh, have some some measurements to stimulate the domestic demand, I mean it's possible. So if they because we, we uh, China do have the large uh, supply or the production capacity, um, but here but there are two things that we we kind of uh, considering as a limit as limits. So the first one is um, the filtering tariff. So the subsidy. So I mean the subsidy. So the subsidy. Uh, the sub the government has kind of announced the subsidy, uh, which will be allocated for the project this year, which about like one billion uh, Chinese yuan, and this is kind of fixed uh, fixed amount. So um, the we we do we do not say they possibly will do something, but we not we unless they will kind of increase that uh, subsidy subsidy gap. And the second thing is about the time. So right now, uh, the auctions has already been pushed back to the almost the second half of the uh, of this year, which is a similar situation as last year. So what that means there are some like time construction, uh, time restrictions for any projects that can be uh, built in the second half. So um, yeah, with that, um, the conclusion is that we. We think the government they probably do things, but we we are seeing a pretty limited space to further uh, stimulate the 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 capacity the installation to even higher. Yeah, that's from me. <laughs> Thank you, Yali. I let me have add some comments here. It was a very interesting question, Michael, that you mentioned um, for IHS that um, you see China going down and and globe and globally going uh, going up. Um, I have not seen the IHS report, so I can't comment on, on, on that in total. But um, in general, what we see in Longi is that China is really fairly stable. Okay, and you can see that the government is injecting stability by having the auction. Okay, uh, like Dali mentioned, fairly similar. They, we also expect maybe the NEA to to bring earlier the um, the project um, the project development period so that um, project project policy 2020 project policy and also i think recently just yes today or yesterday um the the um let's just call the fit the fin tariff has already been announced so that's injecting some stability in the um in the chinese market um yali basically mentioned that the, his, she sees the global demand going from 120 to 150 to 108 to 143 we see exactly the same okay so my my view looking at these numbers is that china is actually remaining the same and while 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 globally coming down 10 gigawatts or so 10 to 15 gigawatts thereabouts uh, basically if you look at the ratio yes you will see china china increasing in share but not because china original forecast is coming down it's actually remaining the same it's because the numbers from the global uh, demand is coming down and that's what we see this in, from long too. Um, and um, and when we look at um, at the subsidy free markets, so I think the the main exercise um, of the 531 uh, restructuring was basically leaving FITs behind and uh, especially very high, <laughs> rather high FITs behind, and then moving um, through a new market design to uh, a subsidy free and an auction environment. How how is that working? So in, in Europe um, and and in the, in the Western world, in the US also, we we've seen at least um, last year quite some some interest in in PPA um, wholesale um, based projects. So so what 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 are we seeing in in China? So it it started um, slowly, um, probably slower than um, than the government um, had hoped. Um, so I think. Um, Yali, you had, uh, um, I believe, two gigawatts um, um, for CNI subsidy free space um, last year. So, 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 and and for this year, it's 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 similar. Um, um, why is that so? Um, uh, is is COVID one reason, or um, are there also several other reasons why um, 
uh, it, it is not um, anticipated to be much higher because you also assume similar levels for 2021 where, where the range is between three and four for that segment. Um, yeah, so for, CN, for CNI, those subsidy, pro, um, subsidy free projects, we, uh, we originally we did like uh, kind of uh, think it will be an interesting one, but there are some problems later coming up that we have observed. So basically uh, the big problem there is that uh, we do see some good like resources. So previously this is a very hot uh, area and we see the good, or we can call the good rooftops of the commercial uh, projects has mostly been um, secured or used up. Uh, and now this is this because this causes this causes a one like one prop one things uh, that the development of the developers cannot really get very good sources. The when when they're talking about resources, it's also including um, including the uh, how you can collect your collect your your fee your your electric your, your your bills. So basically, uh, they are so the developers they are kind of worried about. Uh, because of the impact on the economics, it will be difficult for you to collect the fees from those CNI sectors. And, uh, and, and the second uh, things from that is that the, the, self, the self generation could possibly not that high as expected. So previously, when we look at the economics of those CNI, so CNI subsidy free projects, uh, we assume a pretty high kind of self-consumption, and that will make uh, make much more economic sense. But now this probably will be impacted if, uh, because of the in economic. And Sandy, what are you seeing? I think you have a with your inverter business um, in, in in China. So are, are you seeing any? Also, similar issues, or um, especially in that space, or also, and when we also beyond, look beyond that towards residential, or yeah, um, I, I mean, we, I guess our our strongest two sectors of the three probably are actually well, our residential and CNI versus utility. So we are we are um, forecasting reasonable growth in the residential sector and a quicker uptake, hopefully. Um, um, so we see some positivity out of that. Um, CNI, um, again, um, I think probably a later, later, later in the year for us. Um, and um, I think probably if we're looking at utility China, maybe, maybe one for Ben as far as um, utility space in China and how that's affecting them or how they or how they think that might run. And, and, and uh, so, so then, oh, sorry, please. No, no worries, Mike. I, I was just going to comment to Sandy that I don't have the data in front of me. No. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and, and if we now look at um, from China towards the rest of the world, so so how will the, the developments um, that we are seeing now in China um, um, also influence the rest of the world? So, um, so that means we have production up and running again. So that means uh, we have um, quite some amount of or some volumes of product coming out of the factories. Um, Yali has shown there is expansion. Um, so what um, what are we seeing? Is there is there now pressure, or is there now um, to to move um, to move products um, um, or product um, out of China, or is um, are you now just also looking at at the Chinese um, Chinese market and want to keep it there? Because at some point, of course, there is. Um, Always the question where deliveries go, um, depending if we have it more uh, buyers or, or sellers market. So, um, so, 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 what's what, what are we seeing now? What kind of developments uh, are, are we seeing in terms of products, and and what kind of regions are are preferred um, at the moment from for, from your point of view, also in terms of attractiveness. Uh, Um, Sandy? Yeah, yeah, I'll go. Um, it's a, it's a, the the uh, the demand uh, shift is 
um, unprecedented, I guess. We we were dealing with a period of no no dispatch, and now we you're absolutely right. We're dealing with the question comes where we where we need to dispatch to next. Um, uh, I think you know China's just a little bit soon, so we 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 have been fulfilling um, uh, back orders from the uh, the, sh the shutdown period. Uh, we, we, we're getting close to getting close to being clear of that now, um, and then yeah, and then yeah, it, it comes down to which market needs it. So I mean, I, I mean, I'm uh, give you a feel for what what we're seeing in in Europe at least. Um, I mean, I'm based in the UK. The UK residential CNI market, I think, has pretty much come to a halt. Um, so whilst we have existing orders maybe already on the water or already shipping um uh, there's not huge demand there we're seeing germany holland um they seem to be dealing with um dealing with installations completely differently so at the moment we've got strong demand on certainly in holland and germany for the deliveries now um which um you know we hope sustains um but but trying to trying to nearly guess if that's going to be there still in a week or two weeks or four weeks is uh, what all our customers are trying to, you know, trying to look at at the moment. I mean, it's nearly crystal ball time um, as far as, you know, are we going to come out of this as quickly as China came out of it? Are we, um, you know, are we still going to be allowed to install or, or installers going to be allowed to work still? Um, so it is uh, a very, um, uh, very difficult time to make any accurate predictions. All every customer we're talking to is having to just, you know, either be cautious or, or take take some measures to assume assume just a, a, a drop. Yeah, not easy. <laughs> yes, Sandy, absolutely not easy at all. I my view is that um, certainly you if if I try to push a big elephant, okay, in the way that she doesn't, he or she doesn't want to go, it's impossible. <laughs> uh, with every, almost every country right now, the Schengen borders is closed, the India is on lockdown, Australia is on, on lockdown, um, and also, and also in, in, in other parts of the world, South Africa included. Um, trying to say, we're gonna, we, we're gonna move the products into India, as, as a strategy, it's just not going to work just because you want it yeah, to. We would, we, okay. we, we'd like to, but uh, yeah, not, exactly. Uh, not, so, not not possible. Yep. Exactly, not possible. So suddenly, with the with the and this plays back into the ramp up of the of the production back in in China, you are going to have overcapacity for sure. Q2. Okay, we actually see a, an overcapacity in Q2. Um, where is it going to go? Um, Perhaps uh, some people would, some brands would, would cut down on capacity. Uh, some brands like Longi uh, may, may, be, may be in a better position with some orders are going to be fulfilled. Uh, and in general, there would be consolidation in the industry. That's what we, we see from Longi. Um, my, the numbers that I'm looking at is that um, the over the module supply will reach over 35 gigawatts just in Q. Q2 again, but the but the demand would be about under 20 gigawatts on a worldwide basis. Okay, so you have a, a surplus of 10 gigawatts, and which brings back to what Yali has mentioned, the prices um, is going to be softened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll see that. Um, uh, we've, we've, one, one positive is possibly, um, I think we'll see a busy period once this is through. I mean, we're for, uh, mm -hmm. we, we're oh, yeah. expecting a little bit of a crazy, crazy time. So how to manage crazy? Um, and um, so yeah, we we are proactively um, stocking, uh, aiming to stock in in Europe and other other regions when we can get in. So yeah, we can't get into India. I don't think at all at the moment. Um, still, we still have shipments to South Africa. You mentioned that, but they're on they're on a pretty big lockdown as well. So being ready for, being ready to go again, whenever that go again uh, happens is um, I guess what we're looking at at the moment. Just, uh, I'm just hoping one of you three guys can tell me uh, when we're all gonna start again, yeah? Yali, you have the magic answer? <laughs> I hope I can, but uh, 
unfortunately, I'm not an expert on the, I mean, the, 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 the virus, the virus things. So basically, I guess that will depend on how the virus can be controlled um, in the following, like, I don't know, two to three months, uh, probably. So um, basically, yeah, I, can, I, I agree with uh, you guys. So basically, what China, if we, 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 if we look at, uh, if we discuss about the China's impact on, on the global market right now, I guess, um, firstly, China do count about so one third of the global market and they have uh, something there. Um, but since actually last year, we, had, we have seen that the, the global, so kind of shift from what, what, it, what it was in 2017, when China kind of comes for so, so big share of the global market and it's, it's shifting to the global, to the global markets um, more. And um, also if we look at the China customer data, the China PV exports last year, it was about 20, about, about 40%, more than 40% increase compared with the previous year. So basically that means um, the, role of, uh, the role of China playing the global uh, market in terms of demand is kind of reduced, is, is reducing, but it's still significant, but it's definitely reducing. Um, and um, even without the even without the COVID nineteen, even if we don't talk about COVID nineteen, then uh, the China's return uh, of China's impact, I guess, is mostly on the on the supply side. So the overcapacity, as ben, as Ben has Benji just mentioned. So um, again, I guess, but that again is also something that is already happening, and we have seen we have seen no surprise that overcapacity is there. Um, then apologize. Somebody's locking our doors. So, so basically, the uh, the the simple con uh, simple conclusion is that the China uh, has less impact less impact on the global market right now. It's more about the oversupply and more about how other countries can control the virus in the coming uh, two to three months. And of course, it's also about different um, strategies to, to combat the virus. Huh? So as we see, so I think, um, as, as you said, um, Sandy, in Germany, as that's also what I heard, is actually um, there's still quite some construction going on. What's interesting here is also, okay, so I'm hardly leaving the house for, um, although you don't have to stay at home, but um, for the last two weeks, but but at least um, DIY shops in Germany are still open. So that means craftsmen um, are all still on construction sites. Um, and um, so this is still possible, considered apparently as an important part of um, the economy. Um, at least one of the few, they, they really try to, to keep, keep operating here. The, but the, the question is also, um, um, what, what I wonder is how, how much um, do we see um, People, I don't know if you've heard anything from from the from installers you work with, for example in Germany, how um, how how homeowners react um, if do they do they let people in or are they afraid and say okay uh, I keep uh, the social distancing rules and uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to have anyone in my house. So I also heard yeah. something. So some some installers said okay no problem for us, but I don't know what what you heard. Um, shall I go? I guess I, I, I get a reasonable front, uh, front line feel for this. Um, yeah, if you talk about, um, if you, you know, you're talking about uh, building supply stores being open in Germany, I mean, that's fundamentally the issue. If you take the UK, they are shut here. So there is, you know, if you can maybe do a few more days work, but um, uh, if you're looking at building works, you know, nearly that's, that is coming to a halt. Well, at the moment, all our all our all our customers are still shipping inverters and modules um so that so it's it's possible to buy today um but then when you get down to it's not just allowing the installer to um come and make the installation um whether that's at a home or a business um it's, it's the channel before that it's not even letting a sales guy um visit your home or uh you know or business to to make the sale. So I think what we're seeing at the moment is um, th there are still installations. If we take UK, there's still there, there are still installations going, but I feel that that's probably just the tail end of sales agreed a few weeks ago. 
Um, but but if we take straight, you know, Holland immediately is seemingly normal at the moment. I mean, uh, yeah, they're they're installing in a safe manner. Um, I believe the same as Germany. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we've we've got we're dealing with you know um, those markets wanting more than we even have for them at the moment. So we um, prior to prior to um, air freight becoming a priority for medical. I mean, we were we were we were air freighting a lot of stock out of China. We've uh, deflected that to a train service to rush keep rushing through product at the moment. Because remember, we're coming out of a production period where we, we had no shipment out of China and uh, not that many weeks back. So it's uh, uh, crazy. But yep, yeah, so we, we, we have it on both levels. So yeah, even today, um, uh, if we could, we'd be flying uh, where it's needed. And uh, we are using trains today to play catch up into some markets and then other markets, you know, you just, it does, it's, it's, it's completely stalled. Uh, it's a funny game. Okay. So, um, yeah. Yeah, please Ben. From, from Longy yeah. side, I think we see exactly the same picture as Sandy. Um, the, the, current, the current orders, current month, um, March and in fact part of April is not is not so much affected at the moment probably because of continuing all this and also because because in many countries say for example Australia energy is deemed an essential service so that continues. Okay. However, go, looking forward itself, particularly on the residential and the rooftop C and I rooftop side, uh, you see a weakening of the of the of the numbers um, and. And I think Sunwise is in, in Australia provides a very clear picture of that in, in one of their, their trackers. Um, from the large scale, large scale pro project, a lot of large scale projects will probably be postponed due to shortage of labor. Um, particularly in the European side, a lot of East, East European are not able to come to the Western Europe where the projects are for the, for the installation. They just don't have the, the, the labor source at the moment. Um, certainly, the flexibility of the government in extending deadlines um, in in Europe, as as well as also you see this in, in India, okay, will mitigate that that effect. Um, so the projects are not cancelled; the projects are being moved um, to a later date. Um, some will, some would come into Q3, Q4. Again, coming back to Yali, depending we don't set the schedule. Um, this virus sets the schedule, <laughs> okay. Um, so. Um, and that's and again the, the, the uncertainty is there. So and therefore the global demand is expected to drop. Um, we see dropping by about 10 gigawatts or so. Um, what we're seeing is of course that central banks ease um, liquidity um, globally, um, so to kind of create stimulus packages. Um, and um, do do you see um, um, that a lot of capital Will be will be available for renewables um, in in Q4 and in in, in next year. Um, so that will renewables be actually high on the agenda? So um, because for example in in Europe what we see is that the European Commission on the one hand of course also very heavily has to look at um, and and react um, to 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 this to the virus crisis, but at the same time. Um, um, we see a lot of the administration people are continuing to work on the Green Deal, turning Europe in the long run um, carbon neutral by, by 2050. So, so that means that the internal orders are still, you have to keep your deadlines and we continue with that. For sure, COP26 was now also moved by, by a year. Um, that, that makes sense. But nevertheless, um, um, so at least um, in, 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 in Brussels, actually, um, the, the green technologies or the clean energy is still high on the agenda. So, so what are, are you seeing um, around the world when you, um, when, when, when you look at liquidity and possible stimulus packages and including um, also money for solar there? Um, let me just jump in very quickly, um, just, just from point of view. Um, I think it is still patchy at the moment from a uh, while the government most of the government has 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 agreed that solar uh, or an energy business is essential services the 
liquidity packages, liquidity, or let's say, let's just call it the stimulus packages, um, are not specifically going to the energy sector. Okay, they, I think they go to much, much more urgent needs at the moment: employment, um, um, people, daily lives at the moment. Uh, perhaps the second round of this uh, will have will have um, a small support for energy. The in countries, in projects that are already have very secured financing will likely go on. That's not going to stop. Um, however, new projects itself, okay, um, may have a little bit more difficulties, at least in um, in in our view, um, in 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 securing the the, the finance unless they are working with with very large um, uh, internationally known companies. This this is what I. Um, that's a, a broad stroke of, of, of this macroeconomics. Yeah, and from from my side, I, I do agree with what Michael said. So basically, the fundamental the fundamental things is not changed. So the world is is still like uh, working towards the green the green energy. So we're not seeing that uh, in change in the long term, but in the short term, um, it did depends on what the what the what what how the how serious the impact is uh, to the cap, to the whole world i mean so basically uh, whether they will so in the short term whether they will have those uh, investment towards uh, the energy projects or not but it of course it's very likely they do because uh, right now um, when we're talking about the uh, the shutdowns of the project the shutdowns of the for example the residentials uh, the residentials and the commercial side projects, and also possible risks to shut to 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 impact the construction of the large utility scale projects. But on the other side, we do see some governments are already working on some incentive uh, programs. Uh, for, for example, for the residential projects, um, one there are two examples I can I can I, I heard recently. One is from uh, South Korea, so the government is. Considering to uh, to bring up the the, the incentives um, to subsidize uh, individuals if you if you want to install solars on your rooftop, and the second one is uh, Australia. So Australia. So one um, it, it's not everywhere, but but the Australia government is also considering to do some like incentives to uh, to support those uh, installations. So. Basically, yeah. So it depends on how um, whether this um, this financing the cap the capital can um, like recover that quickly, or whether they have other uh, priorities. But in in long term, we do believe that the green the green energy project uh, the green the, the the trends is still there for those like renewable energy projects. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I think so. The one nice example is also Holland, um, actually, where the government recently actually doubled um, the, the the budget for the um, for the SDE project, actually. So simply because they have to have to meet their 2020 targets, um, EU targets. While we see, of course, um, several um, tenders being delayed or or postponed um, in, in in several countries. Um, so maybe um, so um, and and. We, we have, of course, also one one other component um, uh, making life difficult these days. It's the oil price, uh, which uh, there there is this uh, yeah uh, fight between uh, two two big producers on on market shares and uh, and so what what do you see um, how how will that impact in the in the short run also. Um, solar demand, um, especially that um, there is also now a lot of demand for solar simply because it has become so price competitive. Or don't you see any any impacts there at all? Well, um, yeah, I can I can try to answer that first. So basically, mm -hmm. yeah, we do have colleagues monitoring the oil prices as well, but. Again, in long term, we uh, we at least we haven't changed our long term views on the on the like uh, uh, green energy and for for solar specifically because right now um, 
the risk there is that the, the government, because right now most of the solar demand is from the government auctions, uh, so it, 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 there, there is possibility or risks there if any other energy are like, I mean, I know, cheaper, then you, they probably will impact a little bit on the, on the coming fines. But that's from the economic side, but considering the other like uh, goals set by those governments, um, for example, the, like the, the, the climate change goals for, for most of the governments has been set up. We don't think this will be changed uh, by some like short term disruptions such as sudden um, reduction of the oil prices. Although I don't know how, how, how long that, will, that can last. Okay. So maybe a final question, so we're, we're coming to a close. So, because um, Yali also um, um, mentioned um, new technologies um, that, uh, that we're seeing, um, um, and so I think, um, Ben, you, you've been also at the, and, and also Jin, um, as Solis, um, Solis has been um, also at the forefront of technology. So, so what, what do you see? think actually how will this um, this overcapacity actually influence or impact actually the transition to newer technologies and efficiencies so um, because Longy was always a pioneer first you were the first one pushing perk you were the first one actually or one of the pioneers and by facial you um, you you we are also seeing now half cells we see um, new products um, so 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 is, is is this is this having an influence on that the the, the whole crisis or uh, doesn't it matter actually also to the to the change to to bigger wafers Wh whatever we're seeing also well as you know michael um, longi has just launched the m6 wafer um fairly recently and we are continuing to to invest in, in, in this technology in, in terms of in the wafer as well as in module, optimizing the wafer for use in the module. Um, we believe at this point in time that the, that is the most um, cost effective in terms of the performance ratio of the of, of the module at the moment. Having said that, um, Longi is also exploring other technologies um, at the moment. I'm not, I'm not at the I'm at liberty to, which I'm not really able to discuss, but certain different technologies are, are being investigated in, in our R&D division. Um, I don't believe, personally, I don't believe the COVID-19 um, has impact to the timeline of this R&D. We don't say because of, of COVID-19, we are going to accelerate this the technology um, as well as the as well as the certification and testing of, of this uh, thing it sets its own cost <laughs> okay at this point That's in time well, m6 would be would be the focus of where we are at the moment and in the inverter business, Sandy, so I think so, as we've seen also in, in Australia, just before the lockdown, actually there was a demand uh, spike because uh, because people wanted to rather make sure they can really stay energy independent, having intelligent inverters, having actually their storage system and be self-sufficient. So, so, so what, what, what are we seeing here? Um, yeah, I mean, if we take uh, yeah, Australia, one spike. Uh, I mean, if we take South Africa, I mentioned before, there's a load shedding down there that's really driving demand for storage solutions, if we take that as a, as a, as a region. Um, I don't think, uh, I mean, the the blip of uh, in, in time scale of covid in china combined with uh combined with uh the chinese new year holidays anyway i mean it, it, its impact has not not massively set us back i mean we had a couple of product launches that um maybe uh maybe we've just reviewed when to when to put them in the market um but that's more now if there's not, not so much demand to launch a product this week uh, we might just wait you know, another four weeks or eight weeks, whenever, whenever we start to come out of this. Um, I, I think um, from our side, I mean, we, we, we're not able to, we're obviously not looking at wafer development. We, we're looking at, um, you know, even for us, battery storage in inverter manufacturing world is reasonably, reasonably new. And the, the worldwide demand for that is still new. It's, it's still only just, just getting going. Um, but it'll be a big part of our, big part of the makeup of our business over over the next uh, next few years but um uh, yeah i mean if we take q1 uh, q1 for us has been crazy crazy peak even 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 with what we're dealing with now um and um 
you've got certain countries in there that that are, uh, are still 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 going now like we've mentioned so it is a hard one to predict the next next quarter on okay um so then uh let me say thank you to all of you so my takeaway is it's hard to predict the next few weeks month because we're all no virus experts uh, so uh, that will uh, define uh, how yeah how how our life actually uh, is in the in the next few months and uh, then of course also will have impact on the business so um, what I would like to say thank you so we will have an article about this uh, this webinar on our website um, we everyone will be able to download the presentation and listen and view actually the this uh, webinar on YouTube um, you are also invited to um, download our la latest report we just uh, pub published something on metallization pastes um, and recently also something on high efficiency cell technologies there will be more uh, reports coming and of course also more webinars Thank you to everyone, especially um, good night and good evening to our participants in Asia. Thanks so much and have a nice Thank evening. you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to add one, one, quick, one quick point that I think this is, besides talking about business, I think it's also a good time for, for uh, many of our companies, uh, lo local China or overseas company, to give a little something back to, 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 to the community, to our customers. Um, but certainly we are doing so with our customers in terms of flexibility of um, delivery, flexibility of contracts. And I'm sure we're seeing this right across all the industry. So balancing business at the moment and also, um, uh, and also giving a little bit back in these challenging times. But thank you, Michael, that's, for hosting. That's, thanks. That's a nice final word. I think everyone will appreciate yeah. that. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.